Let me tell you right now, these two statements should never be together on your bullet point list. Just not what you want to see from a guy who's opening up his own fund, right? Just any amount of research or have eyes, like, I don't know. So if you follow me, you generally know what I think about the market right now. But today I don't want to talk about that. I want to talk about Todd Gordon and some things that he said to me on Twitter. Generally, I know how it is. We had a short back and forth. He didn't really respond to me much, kind of left me on red a little bit. I tried DMing him. No response either. I get it. I only have a thousand followers. People assume that I must not know anything because, of course, your follower account directly relates to your IQ and experience. So I was going through Twitter and I came across this post and I actually had to double check, like, why do I follow this guy? Because this doesn't look right at all. And then I realized he has a bunch of followers, CNBC. I didn't realize that we actually have similar networks. Like I know a lot of people that know him directly and it, it, it blew my mind even more because this is a bit ridiculous. This is his Elliott Wave count for the S&P, which he has clocking going to 4,800 later this year. Now, of course, he looks like if I'm assuming his time frame is what he if he thinks he has his time frame correctly, he's expecting that to come as soon as August. That's quite a big jump, especially when we look at the semiconductor stocks that are already extremely overbought. QQQ is overbought. The Nasdaq is overbought. The breadth in the market, the amount of stocks that are actually doing well is super weak. I mean, fundamentally, everything's a mess, right? And I, I addressed this when I responded to him after looking at this. And I said, I don't see how you got here. First of all, the volume alignment with these labeled waves is whack when I tried recreating this in TradingView. And it was. And, and I've even come across this same exact type of Elliott wave pattern. And and I haven't talked about the, the SPY index actually on my own channel, just because I feel like the Elliott wave count is really weird right now. I actually have this as a B wave set up because I'm using this volume as confirmation, which is, you know, literally, we'll, we'll get into this in just a moment. But but so that's, I'm like, this, does, this seems completely invalidated if you're using that. Seems very weak. Also, how on earth are you fitting any fundamentals in this path and calling this the preferred seems overly generous. Now, to be fair, he could be saying that this is his preferred outcome, as in like it's the one that's most favorable to him, not preferred as in like he thinks this is the most likely. Now, I could have been, you know, had the assuming there and made the wrong assumption. I said this feels very unlikely outcome. We'll see though. I really only put this to feel like this just doesn't seem like I'm being too aggressive. I'm very, you know, self-conscious about that. And even this video, I don't have personal beef with him. I just want to talk about some of these bull cases out here and how ridiculous they they are, right? So he responds with this, and I'm assuming this is his his bullish case, right? Uh, visibility on terminal FF rate. This is the Fed's funds rate, right? This is like, I guess, his bullet point, which I, I'm assuming that since he did respond to this, that he is saying that this was actually his preferred, like his what he thought was the most likely outcome. But he didn't outright say that, so I don't know, right? Visibility on terminal FF rate. Basically, he says he's he's got a good idea of where interest rates are headed, you know, which I will already respond and say doesn't really matter because remember, when if an interest rate happened today, it would take six months for us to see what it would do to the actual economy and the market, right? So even though we can generally assume that, well, I, I'm assuming he's probably actually most likely making the assumption that we've already had the late last rate hike, which I don't think is the case. And I'll talk about that in just a moment. But I I don't think that matters. Like we, we can see that where they're headed. Yeah. OK, let's see what it does to the economy. I don't think that this is actually relevant. Maybe I'm making some assumptions here, but this isn't even the big point, right? Q1 earnings nowhere near the negative expectations. OK, this is optics. And I talked about this a lot on on my videos, right? The optics, they heavily uh, lowered their guidance. They said for Q1, we're probably going to do awful, which makes it that much easier for them to pee expectations. It seems like they're doing really well, even though we've heard broadly across retail companies that the consumer is showing weakness. Demand is not all that great. These are like blowout. Oh my gosh. All time earnings. These are not actually that strong at all. So I'm actually like stupefied that he said this uh, because I think it's very obvious the optics that are being played here that are always played by these companies. Uh, Q2 guidance upped for who? 
For who? For for what? I, the handful of stocks, the 17 stocks out of the 500 that are actually doing well right now? <laughs> I'll, I'll give them that there are some companies that upped their Q2 guidance, but there are a lot who did not. Uh, massive rotation into growth out of last six months. This, we'll talk about this. Uh, let's cover this next bullet point. Sentiment, especially here on Twitter, worse than the great financial crisis. Let me tell you right now, these two statements should never be together on your bullet point list. You do not see a massive rotation in growth paired with sentiment that's worse than the great financial crisis. That is not a thing that happens. That does not make sense, okay? We are literally seeing uh, the equivalent to a dot-com bubble occur within AI. And you're going to tell me the sentiment is worse than the great financial crisis. No, it, it, it is not. Okay, it simply isn't. And I actually went through multiple sentiment indicators to make sure I just wasn't being crazy. You know, I think he read a few bearish tweets that he thought were ridiculous and just broadly made assumptions over the whole sector, which is not what you want to see from a guy who's opening up his own fund, right? It's not it's not very good due diligence. But if I look at the CBOE's call put ratio, it looks very bullish. If I look at the fear and greed index from CBNC, the company that he's a contributor to, they also think that the market is being greedy right now. That's not what you see when sentiment is super low. If we look at the um, the AA sentiment indicator, which is like one of the oldest and most professional sentiment indicators, it's neutral, right? Neutral, not bearish, not bullish, neutral. So, I, you know, and that indicator is derived from professionals. It's literally just surveys they fill out, right? So I, I, I don't know where he's getting this from. Uh, this this makes no sense. This is the thing he did not respond to uh, when I posted this because it's it's it <laughs> like how can you say these two things together? This makes no sense. Okay, short exposure equities and treasury mark huge market huge. This is not true. This is simply not true. When Nvidia skyrocketed, it had like a one percent short ratio. It wasn't even that shorted. And, and just like I said, when I checked the ratios, which I kind of already knew what I was going to see because I've tracked the market every day, but this is not the case. The market is favored on calls. It has a 0.53 call to put ratio right now. Okay. That is very favored to calls. Okay. That is a, a bullish trajectory from option traders on the market. Okay. There's not a lot of broad short exposure, which I think even if we were looking for hedges, most people hedge with puts. So I'm not seeing a lot of puts. I'm not seeing a lot of hedging. So I'm not seeing a lot of shorting either. When I look at the short ratios, a lot of, even these companies are running super hot right now. And then he says, when treasury short trades come off, rates will drop diving further rotation into growth. Okay. Where is the massive rotation into growth? I already was just talking about this. <laughs> 17 out of 500 stocks out are performing right now. We have some stocks that were down 80% that are now up 20% and they look all overbought right now and nothing's really changed fundamentally for them. You know, AI, which is a company that I've been profiting off lately. I don't even know if that company is going to exist in 10 years. I'm going to be really honest. Like I was looking for ways to make money off the mania and this one looked like a clear winner. And I actually have a, a part of that trade that I'm trading the earnings tomorrow evening. And I'll probably talk about that on the weekly report tomorrow as well. But this massive rotation and growth simply does not exist. I mean, all you have to do is just do just any amount of research or have eyes like i don't know <laughs> to tell you the breadth of the market is absolutely terrible so i don't know where this math massive rotation is unless you're just talking about ai versus the entire market and you have this massive rotation in the ai which i mean basically the only stocks that will hold up from that is 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 the semiconductor stocks right and then what happens to a lot of these other companies well they get they get brutally uh, cleaned up by AI, you know, I, I'm worried. It, I, I was about to talk about a company who I'm doing a short report on that's going to be upload, uploaded to the Discord later tonight. But, you know, there's going to be some big victims when it comes to the rollout of AI and just huge deflationary pressure. So um, that's going to be a negative to the economy and could be a negative to the stock market in the short term. So I just don't see it likely at all. 
He then said short exposure in equities. Oh, oh yeah, 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 I covered that. And then he did a video on how he upped his growth exposure. Upping his growth exposure at these evaluations is crazy. I mean, absolutely crazy. You want to be de-risking. When you see a stock like NVIDIA that's gained the valuation of Intel literally in 20 minutes and you don't take profits, but instead get more exposure. And I'm not, I'm assuming that he's talking about this stock. I'm, I'm, I am using the most extreme example possible, but it, it, the picture is the same, right? You should be de-risking when that happens. You should be taking profits when that happens. To say that you are upping your growth exposure in your RIA right now, like I could, my mind would, ex my head would explode if I saw someone do this with other clients' funds right now in this market environment. That is so dangerous, especially, I mean, if, if it, especially if like you have retirees or something, I would assume, let's, let's, let's make the, the safe assumption, you probably wouldn't do that with like retirees' money, you know, where it's like the last money they're ever gonna have. Cause I mean, it's asinine thing to say. So then here's the other thing that really made me scratch my head. He said volume has very little to do with wave count. And he's talking about my my questioning of this Elliott wave count because it doesn't align with volume at all. This is completely invalidated and a reason why I did not use actually the same exact because this is actually the easiest Elliott wave pattern to generate if you're doing like this one, two, three, four, five, pretty much everyone who does Elliott wave analysis is gonna come up with this, right? But it's when you get to this chop right here that it gets a bit different because I have a three wave and then three wave, this being a B coming here, all right? So he has this as an ABC, I have A here, ending, this is your A, and then a B that isn't finished yet, and then I'm looking for a C to the downside, which I think to come relatively soon, right? So we're gonna talk about this in my report tomorrow. Um, so, but th to say that volume has no, uh, cannot invalidate your wave count is absolutely asinine. It is literally included in every single Elliott wave book ever. Everyone who, I, the people who've taught me Elliott waves use it and trust me, they're better than him. I don't even need to know how long he's been doing them or how good he supposedly is to tell you they are better than him at this, okay? So for him to say that makes me question whether even he understands how to do Elliott wave analysis, which is absolutely crazy to me because, you know, I know a thousand followers, I must know nothing. <laughs> but it is so, so important to know the basics, to read the books, to do the research, and to also put this together and just throw some fundamental bullet points that don't make any sense attached to it, and then just be like, yeah, this is what's gonna happen. No, that's not how you do this. That's not how you do this at all, okay? You can't throw a chart together like this, ignore the egregious bearish fundamentals on the market and say, well, it will just happen. No, 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 okay? I know I talk about a lot of technical analysis on my weekly report, but I try to keep like, you know, 70% fundamentals and then back it up with my technical analysis, okay? I don't try to get either one to necessarily match up with the other. And sometimes that causes me to be more bearish in my trading than I should be in a bullish market because I'm, I'm too focused on the fundamentals, not focused enough on the technicals or, you know, not not uh, acting enough on the mania is occurring on the market and as a short-term trader, I should definitely be doing that. But this this right here, this is not, you know, I don't think he's indicating that he's trading at all, right? He's in his R RIA and he's buying growth stock. So that makes this even more ludicrous.